Greetings, I'm Trevor Miller and we are going to be exploring uh, American History 220 week two. So as we get rolling this week we're going to be focusing on immigration and how immigration affected the Gilded Age and we're also going to be discussing the cities the growth of cities and expansion of cities throughout the era the cities played a critical role in the development of the Gilded Age and industry throughout the era so this is critical to our understanding of the action and politics of the day. As with any lesson, as we get started, I would ask you to remember to keep your historical mindset focused on the people, their ideas and beliefs, their values, their relationships, not only their relationships to each other, but their relationships to the ideas of the time, and then their motivations, what drove them to take the actions they did. Many of the people we are going to be discussing in today's lecture were incredibly desperate as they came to America. So by the end of this unit, in the next unit, you will be able to determine, right, uh, why did American cities grow so much? What type of industrial landscape was there? Who were the knights of labor? And what was their rise and fall like? Um, how did strikes in, in urban industrialism shape the American society during this era? And how did governments respond? The areas we're going to be covering this week is the growth of cities, immigration, and the industrial environment and industrial changes that occurred in the United States during the Gilded Age. As we think about labor during this age, we also have to consider what came just before. And the National Park Service indicated that some 620,000 Americans, right, that's men, women, and children, not just soldiers, died during the Civil War. And as I post that, I have to ask you to consider that during this time period, shortly after, excuse me, uh, there were only about 38 million people living in the United States. So a great number of the Americans that were living during the time of the war died. Now, Reconstruction ended in 1877, and by 1900, some 11 million people from around the world had immigrated to the United States almost doubling the U.S. population. Where did all these people go, you might ask? One of those places, right, is the cities. So many of the African Americans, who were former slaves, migrated to the North and the Midwest. There were large vacancies in the industrial centers. There were many job openings uh, in, in the industrial workforce and factories, and this was appealing to many African Americans who were slaves. Now, there were labor shortages all over the United States, and these African Americans brought with them their culture and their 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 music, their 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 style, and and ended up influencing those areas. And we can still feel those influences today in many regions from around the country. I found this graphic interesting because it denotes exactly where all of the immigrants came from, and predominantly where they moved to in the United States. So as we can see, Canadians came to the United States at about 800,000 during this time period, and they settled largely in the Midwest. We have a very smaller number of Asian immigrants that came to the US, mainly that was because of the Chinese Exclusion Acts during the day. Essentially, uh, there was a law passed that excluded Chinese from entering the United States to emigrate to the United States because of different uh, misconceptions and racist ideals at the time. Also, there were about 100,000 immigrants from Latin America, predominantly settled in the south of the United States. And then we have this great influx of Europeans. We have Irish, we have uh, Poles and, and, and Yugoslavians and, and, and Italians and French and German immigrating to the United States, somewhere around 11 million people, and mainly settled on the East Coast, many of them settling in New York City and in cities all along the East Coast. So as we consider the immigrants, we need to consider who they actually were, what the demographic was. And most of the immigrants that were coming to the United States during this time period were men. Most of them had sold their home or sold their farm, their family farm at home, and came to the United States in hope of finding a future. Many of them sought to save money and send back to, to bring family members with them. But when most arrived, 
most arrived with less than $25 in their pocket. Now I ask you to keep that number in mind, $25, as we spoke last week about the, the uh, amount of money that the robber barons had amassed over the course of their lifetimes, what they were worth when they sold their businesses or their businesses were broken up. Now we're talking billions of dollars and here an immigrant, an unskilled laborer coming to the United States only had about $25. So a steep difference between the worker and the boss. Now, as they arrived, many of them were simply too poor to migrate anywhere else in the country. They only had $25. They needed to establish themselves. So most of these immigrants settled where they arrived in neighborhoods of people with similar cultures, backgrounds, ethnicities, that type of thing. So this created great pockets in the, in the United States. Cities like New York were predominantly broken up based off uh, racial and ethnic uh, immigration status as people came to the United States. But as we consider these people, we have to consider their motives. So some 12 million, 13 million, somewhere in that bracket, immigrated to the United States during this window. But we have to ask ourselves, why? Why did these people give up their homes to come here? So as we think about Europe, and that's a, a great place to start, many of those people in Europe were, were Jews or Poles fleeing persecution. There were progoms going on and there were wars at home and they simply needed to leave or they were going to be killed. Uh, places like, like uh, Ireland, who had the Great Potato Famine just before this window and then again during this window, was an alarm bell. People had to leave or they were going to starve to death. The, the, also, if they stayed, the English had jacked up rents so high that people couldn't afford to stay there. So they had to come to the United States. The population of Ireland dropped considerably during this window as people came to the United States. Places like South America and, and, and Canada, people came to the United States for better opportunities for work, for, for employment and, and the offerings of a better life, that foundational element of the American dream. So as we consider these immigrants as they came so dirt poor, we have to consider why they came here. And then as we do this, we need to consider, right, the, 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 the great Colossus, the new Colossus, right? Bring us your poor, your tired, your, 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 your hungry masses yearning to breathe free, right? Send your refuse to our shores. We wanted these people to come here, by and large, the government did, um, to come here, one, to help fill the labor market, but also they brought with them such rich and unique things from their homeland that helped to shape the country we are today and our culture. There are still pockets of, of individual cultures around the country that are so rich and diverse because of their experiences and because of what they brought with them as they came here. So according to the textbook, the labor market in the industrial sector about tripled during this time period. That is incredibly interesting. And we have to consider the fact that people had left their agrarian, where we were an agrarian society before the Civil War, and then after the Civil War, people migrated to cities and we became an urban culture, right? So this idea that people didn't grow their own food anymore. They didn't farm on the family farm very often anymore. Most people were living in the cities, Right. And this created this environment that was dirty and decaying and there were uh, there was not enough houses for people. However, you have all these immigrants coming in and we put forward these mass projects to 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 build bridges and build tunnels and and build railroads. And this helped employ people and kind of spread people out a little bit. But as we think about things, we need to think about their accomplishments. Um, immigrants helped build the Brooklyn Bridge. They had to mine under the river to dig out underneath the river and put in and put in piers and, and and do things that no one had ever done. The Brooklyn Bridge was almost considered a wonder of the world for several decades because there was nothing else like it on Earth. And it was built largely in part to immigrants as they came to this country, these unskilled workers. Now, the employers, right, of the era often encouraged racial segregation, uh, racial biases, racial tensions between groups because certain organizations would only hire Germans or only hire Poles or only hire Jews or, or, or what have you. And they would, they would pit people against each other, especially during times of strife or strike.
Places like the Garment District in New York City was predominantly uh, a, a, a white Jewish population of people working in the garment industry in lower Manhattan. So there's these pockets all around the country that developed because of where people came in. They settled with like-minded people, people with similar backgrounds and cultures, and then they helped to transform this country into something absolutely amazing based off of their unskilled labor. So as we wrap up this lecture very quickly, right, I want to discuss the exercises that are due this week. And then we talked about the growth of American cities, the, the, the why people migrated from the agrarian society to the cities, right, the growth of cities based off immigration, and then the reasons why all of those immigrants came to the United States, many, many just looking for hope, right? And then we have the labor industry in the United States, and it was robust and growing. As we think about labor, we also have to think about the restrictions that were on labor at this time. So the, the, the industry of the day, there was no OSHA. There was nothing like that to protect workers. So these unskilled laborers came to the United States, and we're going to talk a whole lot about the treatment of employees in the next unit. I wish you well, and I hope you're having a great week.